Redevelopment is always good. You know, change is always good. But as long as the community is included on the change. What is the change going to do? Is it going to push everybody out? Or is it going to allow those that want to remain and remain and be positive in the community to still be here? I think we're all split on it. I think a lot of people are either with it or against it. And then there are people who just don't know. Redevelopment is a well-defined legal term, but generally what we're talking about is taking a neighborhood that has been identified as needing to be changed, needing to be improved, and so the idea of redevelopment is going back into a neighborhood saying we're going to define it, we're going to put some boundaries on it, and then we're going to look at it hopefully holistically to say what are the changes we need, how are we going to finance it, and then how are we going to take the benefits that come, the new taxes that come, and how are we going to use those in a continuing process of improving the neighborhood. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. A lot of us are up and trying to make moves and make things happen because, you know, they may win. You know, it's very, very um, possible that they can win and they can push us out. They've done it all over the place. We have fought too hard, too long, and I myself am not willing to give up my place in the sun, and that's in Bayview Hermit's point. I would describe Bayview as um, right now we need a lot of help that uh, families are falling, young people killing one another. Um, it's a, man, it's bad right now. Baby on this point is a service poor community. When you find that people can't even buy shoes and baby on this point, you have to go out for at least 75% of your services outside the community. Third Street is a uh, uh, relatively blighted uh, area for economic uh, development and for businesses and so on. There are very few resources for uh, fresh foods and uh, services and that sort of thing. So it's certainly, I think everyone in the community would like to see a revitalized Third Street corridor. Blight is, well there are legal definitions, but I would say f uh, for most folks blight is one of those things you know it when you see it when you're driving through a neighborhood and there are very few businesses, when there's a lot of graffiti and garbage, when the basic services that people need from a neighborhood aren't there, where there's a lot of brown fields and empty lots and uh, just a feeling of there not being much there there and that it is a neighborhood that has fallen apart, that has a lot of disinvestment, that's essentially blight. It's a lot of good people that's been here. Uh, for example, this barbershop has been here through many generations. It's, you know, you want to preserve things like the library, the Bayview Foundation, you know, places that need grants and money to help out this community. So when the redevelopment change, there won't be um, a lot of the younger generation that's pushed out. Um, so Some of these buildings need to stay around too, some of them, you know, to keep a little authenticity, you know, about the community. Everybody I talk to is like, they get trying to get rid of me, they're trying to get rid of us, they're trying to, that's all you hear. I mean, that, that's what people are worried about. I mean, okay. you know, our family lost our house through redevelopment. My grandparents lost their house through redevelopment. I mean, it's a real thing in people's minds. It's a real experience. It's not just something that they're afraid of. I mean, they, you know, it, it's in their lives. Well, redevelopment, when it's not done with a focus on making sure that there are benefits for existing residents, making sure that they can stay to enjoy the benefits of new development, can essentially fuel gentrification and can be a process that focuses too much on the place and not enough on the people. Some people don't mind leaving and some people are ready to leave. The problem is if they get pushed out, then they go somewhere else and they, it's like 
most of my people have a feel, feeling that they built this community. So how dare you now, you, you threw it to us because you didn't want it. Now you want to come and give it back and you want to take it back because it has the best weather, it has the best atmosphere and, and no one's complaining. And, and of course it has, San Francisco is beautiful. Might be t uh, 10,000 people have moved out of the neighborhood which are directly to the black clientele, the barber beauty trays and the, the soul food restaurants and per se, and that clientele has moved to the suburbs over our over 40 percent of our customers are coming back into the, this area to do business with us and there's a lot of new people that are moving in the neighborhood are not not necessarily our clientele mm -hmm. just not supporting our businesses every domain is just another word for screw the people uh, eminent domain is the red herring of all urban revitalization. Which is the right of um, an agency or a quasi-government agency in this uh, situation, the redevelopment agency, to um, force the sale of a private a parcel of private property. People are very skeptical about redevelopment coming into Bayview on this point because there was a history of redevelopment in the, in the Western Addition. And what happened, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the history, a lot of people were removed from their homes and they were given certificates and thought they would be able to come back into the community. Those plans um, at that time simply did not, you know, have any uh, constraints on um, taking somebody's property through eminent domain. In fact, I talked to one in particular who was really very alarmed because he, I think her house, where she lived at, was taken over by eminent domain. And someone had circulated a flyer out in Baby Gunner's Point, critical of the redevelopment of the concept plan, saying, and, and said that once again they're going to do land grab in Baby Gunner's Point, the concept plan is going to do eminent domain. And she called and she was frightened and said, here we go again. Until we actually sat down and explained to her that in the concept plan, they could not do eminent domain. Eminent domain can be utilized in the plan, but with a great number of restrictions. Uh, eminent domain may not be used on any uh, parcel or any uh, occupancy that is residentially zoned. Uh, so that if it were a single family dwelling or a multi-family dwelling, there is no possibility for eminent domain. They need to really become more involved with the community, you know, come down and really see what's going on, really get to meet the community, the people, the businesses, the, you know, the people who live here, the older generation, you know, the, the new homeowners and the old homeowners, you know. People need to really get out here and vote and come together and, and stop being so cutthroat and, and if you're together, I, I believe that uh, you'll be stronger and, and strength to go forth, yeah. You can't just sit back and watch and think that everything is just going to fall in line. <laughs> you have to get involved and um, know what the laws are, know how you can protect yourself. And as a community, we need to be ready to uh, try to get in a position to um, balance out the change. That's the best way to be ready. Be, be aware of the changes. I mean, you, you know, you only can prepare for what you know that's coming down the line, which we'll yeah. never know everything, but if we know um, a vast portion of what's going to change or what area's going to be affected the most, um, I think that, that will help as well. There are typically many steps along the way that require public policy approval. It's pretty unusual now to find a large-scale development that doesn't include some subsidies from the public side and doesn't require a whole number of sets of approval from public agencies. Each of those are possible points of leverage for community to come together and demand changes, and demand changes that meet their needs as well as what may be envisioned by a redevelopment agency or what may be envisioned by a private developer. Ultimately, it is the community's voice that needs to be heard, and if things need to be changed and modified in the plan as it goes forward, the community needs to stand up with the PAC, and then at the Board of Supervisors and at the agency commissions planning and redevelopment 
to make sure those things are in place. And as we implement the plan, there's nothing more important than continued community participation. So we need to see people at the meetings. Um, I think that the things that came up about eminent domain, things that were added yesterday about tax increment financing not being allowed at the 49ers project, those all came from people that were complaining that were in opposition to the plan. And I think that that is, uh, they just made it better. The change has already happened. We can't stop it, it's here. So it's a matter of now, how do we embrace the change to make it work for all of us? Young America, we need the light. People of the world, please listen to me. I am the youth of America, and as the beauty of wisdom unfolds and uses the tools of knowledge and time to begin shaping and rounding our character and personalities, let the hands of wisdom hand off the batons of knowledge as generation after generation run eternal marathons of life. Let them run into the beautiful horizon, spreading the righteousness of life, the master plan, the way the great creator meant for it to be. Today's youth are tomorrow's leaders. Let them be groomed and endowed with the eternal fires of wisdom and life as they become knowledgeable and equipped with the tools to build, taking leadership roles today, preparing us for tomorrow's world. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. The lady that we're really trying to make things happen for, and, and she said she's going to live until it happens. And her name is Mother Lee. And this month, we're going to celebrate her 99th birthday. Oh, that's beautiful. This and month? This month. And May, I think it's May the 18th or something like that. Oh. She'll, be, she'll be 99 years old. Oh, that's great. And so she said, I'm, I'm going to hang on. I'm not going to give up <laughs> that's right. until things happen in Baby Hunters Point. So, so I said, Mother Lee, you, you've hung on for 99 years. Just give us a little bit more time. There you go. So we had another one named Mother Jackson. She hung on until this adult health care center was built. And she, she made it to 106. 